And a welcome back, everyone, to yet another edition of Going for Two, presented by our good friends at Home Field Apparel. I am your host, the publisher of the Extra Points newsletter, Matt Brown. I am joined here by my friend and colleague, Brian Fisher. Week one is now officially, officially in the books. How are we feeling, man? Feeling good. Uh, five days of football. You, you can't ask for much more than that. It feels weird to have, you know, talk talk about football on, on those other two days that uh, we, we, we don't get it. But uh, the NFL is right around the corner. So, uh, you know, the season is here. And, and uh, if it if only the fall weather out, outside, uh, out west here, uh, we're, we're not so hot. You know, I, I think it would it would definitely feel like uh, the fall season is here. Yeah, that's I mean, if it helps, it's really muggy and hot here in Chicago, too. I'm recording this in gym shorts. I, I've been you know, the hoodie weather is still probably three or four weeks away. That's that's okay though. It, I mean, I I love the first week of college football. I mean, I look, I, I love college football, but at the beginning, you've missed it. And then when you come in, it doesn't, you don't, it doesn't feel like it's too much to watch for 13 hours in a row and kind of overindulge a little bit because that hasn't been there in your life. And we had a couple of absolutely bananas games. Um, yes. it's, it, you know, multiple games decided by missed extra points. Um, multiple games decided by going for two, eh, eh, if, if you will. Sh- I mean, I mean, you know, you, you get the first cussing blue streak out of television, and then you're like, oh, okay, well, the old alma mater won by 11 points. I'm sure everything's actually fine. Like it was, it was great. Um, we can talk a little bit about some us about some of those things. The most important stuff, of course, for this show is to talk about things happening off the field. And before we get into the gigantic off the field news that I haven't even really had a chance to really sink my teeth in on uh, for extra points, Brian. You are moonlighting. You have another cool podcast project that I think this audience in particular would would love to learn more about. Why don't you tell us about it real quick? Yeah, sorry to do, to uh, cheat on you a, a little bit uh, with, with somebody else, but uh, we are starting a new podcast. Uh, you know, the, the D1 Ticker ex- universe ex- continues to expand. Uh, you know, we, we've done a lot of stuff with athletic directors over, over the years uh, as part of our ADU series, Athletic Director U, talking with them about leadership, about how they put together their programs, how they hire people, how they uh, just kind of go about the, the industry and, and what their career paths are. And uh, we kind of thought, well, we, we probably should do something on with head coaches as, as well. And uh, as, as luck would have it, uh, we, we had a great uh, chat with Bronco Mendenhall and he, he agreed to do it with us and uh, I, I'm excited because I, I think Head Coach You is the name of the podcast you can listen to it anywhere you got uh, going for two here and um, we're, we're going to get into Bronco's story you know he, he's certainly a very unique individual when it comes to head coaches you know he, he is not uh, Nick Saban that, that is for sure you know a very different approach to the game of, of, of college football and his approach on life and so we're going to get into that going to get into how, how he builds programs um, you know we, we get into the first on the first episode uh, which we recorded beforehand uh, before taping this one and uh, you know, just talked about his exit, you know, from Virginia, why he decided to kind of take a pause, um, you know, which I, I think a lot of fans are, are going to be interested in. I, I think he'll he'll be a, a name that might surface for a few uh, head coaching openings. So if you're one of those those schools, you might uh, in, enjoy this podcast uh, a little extra closely than uh, compared to some others. But uh, I, I think it's going to be great to explore uh, college football in this season and, and some of the topics like the transfer portal, like college football playoff. Um, how you put together a roster, how you put together a, a coaching staff, um, you know, what you look for in, in a program. If you are uh, thinking about becoming a, if maybe you're a coordinator and you're thinking about becoming a head coach and uh, we'll, we'll get all, into all that with, uh, with one of the more unique uh, head coaches in the game in the Bronco Mendenhall. I, I can't wait. We're going to have several weeks of it and uh, hopefully you, you tune in. Cause I, I think it'll be worth a listen. When does the show come out? Uh, so our, our first episode will come out kind of right at the same time as, as going for two. Uh, normally that will be on Tuesdays, but uh, just because of this week uh, and everything going on with uh, Labor Day and all that, we, we pushed it back today. So uh, if you're listening to going for two right now, go ahead and uh, jump out of that podcast app. Uh, go, go subscribe to Head Coach U uh, in, in the same platform. But uh, we, we think it, if, whether you're an athletic director, whether you're a, a fan, I, I know I got a lot of c- couple of media requests from, from the folks in the Salt Lake City area and, and those around Charlottesville. Uh, totally understandable, but uh, you know this is going to be, uh, I think, uh, for uh, head coaches, administrators. If you're a high school coach, I, I think there will be a lot of good lessons for you uh, in there. If you're, uh, you know, maybe you you have a recruit to, a, as a kid and you're a parent trying to go through the process, I, I think this will be a bit eye opening as well uh, to go through this. So a lot, a lot of interesting stuff that we're going to have there with Bronco. And uh, again, head coach, you, I, I can't wait to uh, to not only get it off the ground, but uh, really get through the season and uh, chat with Bronco on, on how he approaches things because uh, that's not typically the kind of insight you get. Uh, especially week to week as, as coaches are so guarded uh, with their game plans and, and who might be injured or, or something like that. Uh, you know, this is, this will be uh, some, some real authentic coach speak for sure. 
I am I'm really excited about this. Like I think it's it's a it's a good idea for for a show, and I think Bronco is maybe one of the perfect people to do this kind of thing. Particularly, I think for our company, you sort of alluded to this a little bit, and I say this with love, not a not a pejorative. Bronco is one of the the most. He's a different cat. He's different from almost any other the FBS head coach that I've ever met. Not that I know a ton of them. I, my world's more on the administrator side too. And, and by that, I mean he approaches things from a, a more, I think, cerebral, intellectual way. He's not motivated by the same things as everybody else. I I, uh, I think a lot of the things that people right now are celebrating about Dave Aranda at Baylor, I, I, I think has a lot of similarities with, with Bronco. And so if you – like digging into off the field things and uh, a more holistic approach to your college football. Um, I, 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 this may not be, this probably isn't going to be the greatest chalk show in the world, although I'm sure you, you and Bronco can chop up a little bit about that. But for the other things, I think it's a great choice of guests, great choice of interviewer. It, it should be a fun product. Yeah, I, I can't wait. And, uh, you know, it's funny you mentioned Dave Aranda. He, he was definitely one of the kind of peers, I think, in, in this group that just kind of think about things a, a little bit differently. Um, not, not to cast everybody in kind of one lot if you're a college football coach, but, um, you know, there's a, a definitely holistic approach that he takes to to building his programs. He's, he's been tremendously successful. I mean, you, you kind of go back uh, a ways. I mean, he was there with, you know, Rocky Long back in the days, um, you know, running that three three five and and having a ton of success, you know, had, had a conference change. You know, he, he was the head coach at BYU when, when they left the Mountain West. So I think we'll we'll get into that, especially as conference realignment for, for a lot of fans uh, is, is, is top of mind. How do, how do you approach that as, as a head coach? So uh, a lot of interesting topics over the next couple of weeks that we will hit. And um, I can't wait. We already got um, you know some other things lined up after that. And so uh, I, I think Bronco will just be a fantastic guest, uh, you know, whether whether your program uh, might be in the market for a head coach. And uh, you might think that uh, he, he's a name that's going to come up. I think uh, you definitely will be wanting to tune in because I think this will pr- provide some of that insight that you just simply will not get anywhere else. And uh, he, he gets the the thoughtful answers that uh, I think will will be perfect for this medium. One of the stories that I'm sure that you're going to, you'll end up talking about with him and we has come up and will continue to come up with almost everybody we talk to is of course the biggest news uh, off the field news in the college football universe. Um, You would think that with the couple of days leading up to the first major weekend of the season, that the dominant conversation would be about the games. Nope. Because no one's in charge of the stupid sport. I mean, the, the conversations are about the games now. But on Friday, of course, the college football playoff announces it's going to expand. After, you know, several months previous, with most of the same the same people in the same room decided to, to, to kill that proposal. As I understand things now, and this is a world that I think you are, are more native to perhaps than, than mine, um, we're looking at a 12-team playoff that looks very similar, if not identical, to the proposal that was shot down uh, earlier this year. Uh, six, uh, six, uh, six highest conference champions, six auto bids starting uh, potentially in 2026, although there is interest and in movement in getting this going sooner than that. Um, Brian, since you, are, you, you, you know more people in this room, is, what changed? Between the the first time when all this got scuttled and now, it would seem like some of the same uh, commissioner backbiting or instability or big question marks about the future of the sport, they're still in existence now compared to where they were in January and February, right? Yeah, and, and I think the the commissioners themselves look. This is a, was a vote of the presidents. You know, they they were essentially you know telling the the commissioners, hey hey, go do your job and and expand. And I think they were kind of tired of uh, this this will they or won't they? I, I mean, you got to keep in mind that their job was to kind of look out not just for for the future of this CFP playoff, but but also kind of for the future of the sport because there was nothing there for for 2026. There were, there was no postseason structure at all. Yeah. And so now we now we now we at least have some movement on, on that front. Maybe we can get it uh, done done a little bit sooner. We'll see. In terms of those details, that's something for the commissioners to actually work out and uh, kind of do the, the legwork on. They will meet uh, this week um, after you as, as soon as you hear this, they, they, they will have already met, as, as a matter of fact, likely. And so, um, you know, they're, they're going to get into the nitty gritty in terms of uh, expansion uh, prior to 20, the 2026 season. But um, this was, you know, essentially a, a lot of the the. Uh, presidents there saying, guys, guys, we we got to have something, and uh, let, let's let's get it going. And uh, I, I give a lot of credit to uh, Mississippi State uh, President Mark Keenum. He, he's the chair of the board and, and the SEC representative. And um, you know, I think he he wrangled a, a lot of the voices in that room and uh, said, let's let's go ahead and vote on this and and, and get it done. And uh, it was unanimous. And and I think at at the same time that uh, you know some of those presidents individually wanted something to to have you know and 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 really present to the public and uh, you know ha- ha- have a vote. You know, there there was also circumstances 
circumstances that have changed. You know, I think the ACC, while they were against it initially, certainly after the, the moves of Texas and Oklahoma, you know, I think their, their circumstances changed. They, they would like that additional revenue, obviously, from the playoff. I, I think sure. that's uh, top of mind for, for a lot of them. Uh, on, on top of that, you know, I think from uh, Jim Phillips' perspective, the uh, work that he's done with the Transformation Committee, the, the look at the holistic calendar uh, that they had kind of put up as, as one of their their sticking points early in the process, um, they're, 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 that's already underway. Um, and, and you're likely in the next month or two have some resolution in terms of what the future football schedule looks like in terms of recruiting, in terms of what the actual season start dates and, and that sort of thing. is, is So uh, that, that is pushed to the side. Obviously, with the Pac-12, you know, they, they've been pretty insistent in terms of, you know, what does – um, you know, access look like, you know, what does revenue sharing look like? Those, some of those things that uh, they, they can work through here, but uh, obviously their circumstances changed significantly uh, going back to a year ago when they, when they kind of really put up some roadblocks. And um, I, I think for the, for them, the Rose Bowl, you know, getting on board and, and being part of that uh, new year six rotation a, a little bit more for the quarterfinals um, and, and the semifinals. I, I think that that roadblock ha- has been pushed aside. They, they obviously want the revenue as well. Um, their, their circumstances changed. And, and I think for the big 10, now that they've got the TV deals out of the way now that they've got, uh, you know, expansion on, on uh, a little bit more of the back burner than I, than I think uh, that they were uh, six or so months ago. I, I think they were certainly more comfortable with, with what the structure is going to be going forward. And I, I think even for the next uh, 2023 and 2024, you may not know the answer to this question because it's possible. Nobody knows the answer to this question, but the feed, the que- what I, the feedback I was getting from our, our readers and from some of our listeners after this deal was, well, what does this mean for expansion or what does this mean for realignment or what does this mean for schools X, Y, and Z? And I felt like I, I have a guess, but as of this second, I don't know, one, how much money we're talking about here other, other than it's going to be a lot more. And two, I don't know exactly how that money will be distributed. Uh, we knew what the, distrib- what the distribution formula looked like before, but do we have any clarity about that? Um or is it just that's the kind of thing that's going to get solved a little bit later? Well, the short answer is yes. That's something that the commissioners will be discussing over the next uh, you know week or so, and 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 beyond that. Uh, I mean, I asked uh, you know Bill Hancock, the the executive director. You know, was there any directive from the board? Uh, in terms of what the revenue makeup might be. There is uh, a formula. There are cert- certain parameters in terms of the current college football playoff contract. I-, I think for if you're looking at 2023 and 2024, unless they truly break that contract going forward, um, you're, you're likely to kind of see something uh, on, a, on a sliding scale. But come 2024, six, you know, I, I mean, things, things can change. And, uh, yeah. and I think that it's a, a bit of a sticking point for some conferences, but if the PAC 12 can remain at the table with their big share, where it's kind of the same as, as the, the big 10 is currently right now, I, I think they would be happy with that arrangement. Um, you know, I, you know, certainly uh, it, it's going to vary in terms of whether your conference gets one of those, those auto bids, um, you know, whether you're getting that large, um, you're, you're going to get increased payouts. I, I think that's the expectation. And um, for, for, for the most part, I think that's the, the great unknown is, Actually, what are those percentages? What are those numbers? You got to keep yeah. in mind this this filters down to FCS conferences. This filters down to Army and Notre Dame getting payments. I mean, um, you know, there, there's there's a lot of minute details and minute payouts even uh, that that get decided as part of this college football playoff. And certainly, everybody's going to want uh, their own piece of the pie. But uh, that that is a big one that I think is is going to draw a bit of discussion uh, going forward. But something that pretty much nobody really truly knows at, at the moment. I, I think everybody. Thanks. All right. Something along the lines of the status quo, but uh, you, you never know. I, I think that's that's the one thing we, we, when it comes to college football playoff expansion. You know, we had five or six of these meetings uh, where, where they discussed it and they hemmed and hawed and, and we didn't get any resolution. And then, oh, boom, right at the you know Friday before the uh, season really started on, on, on the first official Saturday of week one. Here's here's your expansion. So uh, I, I think we'll, we might see some twists and turns in, on that front. But there has been no directive from the board. There's been no um, you know discussion amongst the commissioners in terms of, no, we're, we're going to get uh, – 75%. We're going to get 45%. Yeah. You know, th- none of that ha- has, has really been uh, kind of nailed down. And truthfully, a lot of it will come down to those negotiations with media partners and how much, they're, how much they're going to get and wherever, where that money goes. But uh, I think the bottom line is hopefully everyone will be happy because I think they are excited at the prospect of, of the way the structure is with the six auto bids and, and kind of moving forward from there with, uh, with those payouts to be determined. Let's talk about that media side there for a second and then we can talk about what how this kind of plugs into everybody else the as i understand it one of the reasons for wanting to scuttle college football playoff expansion earlier among some of the commissioners was a desire to make sure that one 
broadcasting company did not have the exclusive rights to the entirety of the college football playoff inventory, which is how it is for every other professional sport. You know, you, the playoffs are split up amongst amongst different broadcasters. And by expanding to 12, you're going to expand inventory. The uh, I think conventional wisdom here is that ESPN will continue to uh, have a, a you know, a significant stake in the college football playoff, but that Fox would step in and broadcast some of those games. Do you have any reason to think that that conventional wisdom is incomplete? Are we looking at somebody other than ESPN or Fox trying to get one of these games? Is there room for three different broadcasters for a 12 team playoff? Or are we looking at probably two different uh, entities kind of trading back and forth? Well, definitely two. And I think that's probably going to be the limit. I mean, you got to keep in mind from a CFP perspective with these commissioners as well, you know, like they, they, they kind of want to keep things close to vest a, a little bit, you know, you don't want necessarily where it's, where it's like the NFL where you have so many broadcast windows, so many Nickelodeon. different partners. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, as, as much as they would probably love, you know, some of the exposure, I, I think the uh, overriding factor that, that I've, I've heard uh, certainly is, is that uh, Fox will be a major player uh, in, in this. And, and I, I think for um, when it comes to expansion early, ESPN is, is obviously heavily involved. I think there is the uh, thought process that even if they can get the finer details on that uh, taken care of for 2023 and 2024, um, you know, come 2025, 26, you know, this is going to go to a full open market, open bids. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. But, uh, you know, ESPN and Fox have combined for uh, major media rights in the past. I, I would expect nothing less for this. I, I, I even think, you know, honestly, if, um, you know, we do get the early expansion. Uh, those first couple of rounds, um, you know, could be sub license from ESPN to, to Fox to, to get in the, the extra broadcast partner, help pay for it. Um, you know, certainly we've seen this with CBS and Turner uh, when it comes to the NCAA tournament, uh, a similar type arrangement where ESPN probably likely keeps the uh, either the, the semifinals and the championship game on, on ESPN airwaves. That, that seems like a, a compromise that, that could maybe suit all parties until they really go uh, to the open market at the end of the contract. Because that, that that's the thing is, is ESPN really kind of has not weighed in. They, they were are going to hold the CFP to their contract because it is a bit of a sweetheart deal for, for them. Let's let's yeah. face it. You know, yeah, they are going to have to pay more. That is contractually stated in there. But is is are they going to break the contract? Let's you know tear it up, it, knowing that they could have a favorable advantage. Sure. You know, that, that's a possibility. But uh, I think at the end of the day, ESPN is, is going to be a key negotiating partner with, with all the leagues. And that's how they want it. <laughs> they, they own all the rights. They they are negotiating with uh, a, a lot of these leagues and outside of the Big Ten now um, going forward. So it's like, um, you know, I, I think they, they want to be heavily invested in college football and the leagues themselves want ESPN heavily invested as well. It's just, uh, you know, will CBS, will NBC, other, you know, Turner, a Amazon, uh, will they want to pony up the money to also get involved in some of these games? We'll see. I, I think early indications are yes, but w at what number? Um, you know, the, the the bean counters are going to do some of their number crunching, especially as we go through this right cycle where the Big Twelve, the the Pac twelve, are on the uh, you know the block. We we just had Champions League rights sold uh, that CBS got involved. So um, you know, there's there's a, a moving media ecosystem that that also has to be kind of sorted out. And I'm I'm going to be very curious to see how that process uh, kind of plays out over here over not only the next couple of months, but but over the next couple of years as well. I would be a little bit surprised if this ends up being more than just two broadcast companies, just because there's just, there's not that much inventory. Yeah. And part of the reason I would think if you're Fox, where you would make such a gigantic investment in the big 10 and likely in the big 12 and, and some of these other leagues is in part to put you in a better position and, and the Mountain West to a better position to be, uh, to, to, to have some exclusivity and a bigger chunk of these conversations they're, they're, with inventory being that at a, at a premium subletting that or, or letting an Amazon or somebody kind of claw in there for one game feels a little counterproductive to me, unless one of those, you know, streaming companies just threw an ungodly amount of money. And part of it, I, I, I honestly, after the way the big 10 deal went down, I feel like if, if anybody was really committed to really just money whipping somebody to get into this game, they would have done it already. And, and the fact that Amazon and Apple allegedly wanted in on the Big Ten and, th and weren't willing to, to just throw enough money where you couldn't say no makes me uh, skeptical. Now, I'm just I mean, they, they threw yeah. a lot more money than, than even the, the Big Ten accepted in, in a lot of those deals. Oh, I mean, oh sure. They're, they're, they're usually, not the one for trying. Yeah, they're usually the, 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 the high bid for these things, right? But, you know, when your market cap is 11 gajillion dollars and you're one of the five biggest companies in the entire world, and this is all your entire streaming operation is kind of a loss leader as an experiment, you can afford to open the briefcase and say, all right, I'm just going to triple whatever it is CBS is going to tell you because I, God damn it, I want to put Minnesota and Nebraska on Apple TV. You could do that.
and no one's going to be like, well, I don't know if we're going to, boy, we're going to have to sell some more iPhones now. Like, like you, you could do it. We'll see. We'll see. I, um, I think the overriding factor in, in my mind is just kind of what, what is the split? How much will they insist on things like being on ABC versus ESPN? I, I think that's going to be a big part of the negotiations and, and the focus is, is um, you know, everybody understands the power of, of broadcast television right now and uh, moving beyond just kind of the, the linear cable networks. That's not necessarily what, what ESPN wants to hear, but they understand they've, they've been through this with the NFL. You know, the NFL was not going to allow the Super Bowl to be on ESPN versus ABC. And uh, I think for the CFP, after these last couple of years, uh, you know, on ESPN, just seeing the, the audience where it's kind of been shipped away, they understand that, um, you know, this, the, this is going to be much more focused on ABC, Fox, CBS, NBC. Like it, it's going to be about the broadcast networks, having those quarterfinal games, having those semifinal games, and, and uh, obviously the championship game. And I think that more than anything is going to be one thing to look at is uh, moving from cable over to uh, broadcast with this new uh, CFP deal. Um, speaking of the CFP deal, I do want to talk about one other potential component, but before we get into that, I do want to make sure that we spend some time highlighting our dear, dear friends, the good brand at home field apparel, the title sponsor for this podcast. Uh, they have, uh, done significant work to keep me constantly clothed in the most comfortable, uh, vintage collegiate licensed apparel. I'm wearing, of course, uh, the Ohio state t-shirt right now the big 1983 energy or something like that i, th I think here on this shirt uh they represent roughly 85 percent of my non-church and professional uh wardrobe uh at this point uh brian probably not quite that high of a percentage but quite quite a bit of it's up here. there it, it's up there it's, unfortunately yeah. I'm, I'm traveling so i don't i don't have one on i i, I have one in my bag a couple in actually a couple in my bag but you know it's it is uh, a, a large percentage and, and a growing percentage of my wardrobe for sure and we would be doing this even if they weren't giving us money to talk about them on this show, although the fact that they do give us money certainly helps. Um, they have retired the widely popular big new Saturday promotion, but that doesn't mean that they're not still dropping new stuff. Um, if you're an NFL degenerate, I'm not. Brian is a little bit. Some of you guys might be. They have the Indianapolis Colts and some really cool vintage stuff there, including some jackets. And they have, uh, they're doing a new uh, series right now where they're dropping a new shirt to celebrate a previous national champion. So if you wanted one of the old, uh, I think, 2001 Miami Hurricanes, you can do that. They dropped one today. The 1974 Pit is it. It's like a, the, the baby blue pit with like a kind of cartoonish panther. Uh, I feel like my uh, feelings on cartoon animals well-known, well-established on on, uh, on on this podcast. You can grab your stuff, whether that is uh, Ohio State, Pitt, uh, Chicago State, some Colorado School of Mines, some Division Three things. You can get it all at homefieldapparel.com. Use promo code extra points to save 15% off your first order of hoodies, T-shirts, crewnecks, tank tops, stickers, anything else in that extended universe there. That saves you some money and gives us a little bit of money as well. We uh, are making a, a, a working on finishing up some uh, sales planning here for the rest of this football season as well. If you would like us to shill for your thing as enthusiastically as we shill for home field apparel, you can, of course, drop me a note at sales at extra points mb.com for uh, both podcast and extra points newsletter um, sponsorship availability. We have a, a little bit of room left in September and then some open inventory for October and November. If you want to reach an audience of more than 10,000 college sports fans, administrators, reporters, and industry professionals. Um, the other big question I think here about expanding the college football playoff, because as, as the structure set up right now, top six leagues will get an auto uh, champions will get an automatic bid. I was looking through this in a, uh, you know, not, not just over the last 12 years, but through some of the old encyclopedias for a, a, something that might become a post later on. Even if you are the champion of like the Pac-12 or the Big 12, as it stands right now, you're, you're, you're general and you're the bottom of that top of that top six. Um, outside of the COVID year, like you're going to that if you win, if you're the power conference champion, you're getting that automatic bid like 29 out of 30 years. Um, there's even some years where like a four loss ACC team would still crack that top six. That's the champion. So that's about as close to a true automatic bid as you're going to get. Um, and uh, there's a legitimate pathway forward here for the American athletic and potentially like, who knows what the next five years will be. Maybe the Sun Belt as, as, yeah. as the, as the premier league. So my question to you is if you were like, forget what they actually will do. Like if you were advising the president at the university of Washington, 
or advising somebody in Conference USA or the Mountain West, somebody that anybody that, that might be potentially considering a league change. Does anything that just happened last week change your calculus at all? Is it worth taking less money to have a more clearly defined path to the college football playoff? It, it could be. I, yeah. I would say in general, though, uh, when you look, run those projections, the guaranteed money over a certain number of years is, is always going to win out just because you just don't know uh, how your teams might be. You know, a coach might leave for, for greener pastures and then your program goes in the tank and you're counting on maybe making the college football playoff. And you know, I, I think a, a lot of the conferences now distribute that money pretty equally throughout the conferences how that money gets distributed in the future. I know there's talk, especially out West with the PAC 10, PAC 12 right now, uh, what, what their future is, is going to be. Are you going to give all that money from the, from the playoff to whatever team might earn it? You know, I, I think th those discussions both in football now and, and, and certainly in, in basketball, even the last couple of years have propped up. And I, I think that is going to be uh, a bit interesting to follow. And, and I think could maybe drive some, some of those conversations. But at the end of the day, you know, if you were telling said president, you know what, there's still a, a big 10 invitation on the table and that's $80 million guaranteed every year versus the, the, the allure of potentially, you know, maybe a $60 million payday uh, for, for winning the PAC 12 and, and making it into the playoff. My guess is when, when the, the ultimate bean counters come in and they say, you know, what, as, as much as you want, you want to win, that taking that guaranteed money is, is to totally much more worth it for, for our program. Uh, but it, it's going to lead to some conversations. That's for sure. I think it does you know, help uh, when, when the Pac-12 goes to a Washington, goes to an Oregon who've had those conversations with the Big Ten that you've dealt, uh, you know, uh, detailed there on, on extra points and, and in other places. I, I mean, I, I think for the most part, they say, all right, well, this is a nice sweetener. You know, and, and especially if they get the vast majority of that revenue funneled back into their program. Um, you know, I, I think that at the end of the day, this is a conversation very similar to what European soccer is, is going through right now in terms of you have the Champions League and, and that Champions League money um, that those big clubs get, you know, whether it's a PSG in, in France and or a Bayern Munich and, uh, you know, the, the Bundesliga, like the, the additional revenues that they get from making the Champions League year after year after year is such an, a built in advantage for them. And, and I think that could end up being the same case if you're an organ and yeah. you're consistently making the college football playoff. But at the same time, um, you know, I, I think it will, as, as much as it will slow down kind of conference area alignment at the highest level, I, I do think it is going to be very interesting to see, you know, those Sunbelt teams, you know, the, the Conference USA teams, the AAC now, um, just given the, the changing makeups. I mean, if you're a UTSA right now and you're moving to the American, you got to be, you know, like this is going to be uh, Nirvana for you guys because you got a good program. You have made the infrastructure investments. If you can end up being one of those uh, top six teams, you know, in, in the newly constituted American and, and get an extra cut of that revenue. Um, that that's a huge built-in advantage. And I think for the group of five teams in particular, probably more of a big deal to, to them if, if there's any revenue changes to this uh, new playoff format than a, even a, an Oregon or Washington. This is this you're, you're getting to where I was kind of thinking about it. And like on one hand, I, I gave an interview with a, a Washington State site uh, blog earlier this week at Kook Center. That, oh yeah, at, over at, at what's left of SB Nation. And they were, they were, you know, they were asking me for like, what are some like cons words of consolation or encouragement that you could give the Washington State fan who's terrified about what might happen with realignment, right? If Oregon and Washington, or perhaps other Pac-12 schools decide to go to the Big Ten, it is probable that other Pac-12 schools will go to the Big 12, and Wazoo and Oregon State, um, their ability to secure an invitation is tenuous we, we, we could talk about that right and like i wish i could say no my sources tell me you'll definitely go to the big 12 like i will be a lie but what i did say was you know are you going to make a lot less money than you had before yes uh, that that's probably what would happen would you uh, will, will your regular season games be against schools that you haven't been playing for 100 years that you might not care about as much yes you know in this kind of fantasy uh, hypothetical here we're looking at some kind of gentrified version of the mountain west conference where oregon state and washington state go to but i said the one consolation, and this was, wasn't a joke, was in that format. I would like Washington State's chances of having more appearances in the college football playoff over a 10-year period than Washington. As, as With UW going to the big, hypothetically going to the Big Ten and being the seventh best program in that conference or fifth best program. In that, I mean, they, they, they can't reliably win the Pac-12 now. They're going to go to a harder league. Whereas Wazoo, even if you knock $20 million off that budget, $15 million off that budget, could they win the Mountain West and, and grab a, a, a spot three out of ten years? Yeah, I don't think I don't think that's impossible if you get the right coach. And that might you know that's a, a weird calculus looking at this. Like I mean, I, my my evil twin Matt Brown at the Athletic 
uh, you know, did this, I think, really interesting story about where would these playoff bids have gone over the last 12 years in this format? And you look at this and think like, oh, my gosh, like a school like like Marshall or Tulane would have as many college football playoff appearances as UCLA or, or some of these other major brands because because of this pathway. I suspect you're right. For a jump like the Pac-10 to the Big Ten or whatever we're calling the Pac, whatever at this point, uh, that's so much money that it would probably be irresponsible to not do it, especially given that there's an academic prestige halo effect for the Big Ten specifically. But if you were maybe going from the Conference USA to the Sun Belt or somebody to the American or, or somebody at, at, at that stage, maybe you have a different conversation. If you think it might actually be easier for me to run the table and go undefeated in this league than this other league that only pays $2 million more. Some, you know, it does change the calculus a little bit potentially. Well, it all, it's all going to depend on what, on what the money actually is, but um, it, it does expand what's possible a little bit here, I think. Yeah, I mean, look at, at Boise State, you know, you know yeah. would you want to make a jump to the Pac-12 knowing that, all right, you might get $10 million a year more versus, you know, kind of your, your current sweetheart deal with the Mountain West and, and what you can kind of do in that league? I, I think it's going to bring up a lot of discussions. I, I mean, you, you, you make up the, the Sun Belt and as, as interesting and, and as focused as, as those schools are about the regional rivalries and everything that you got uh, coming into to, uh, uh, the Sun Belt now with, with some of their new members, like yeah. it, it's a competitive league, especially in that division structure that they currently have. You know, that, that East yeah, division. The, the best G5 division and the worst G5 division. Like um, you're, 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 not, you're not wrong. And th this conversation here juxtaposed the fact that maybe Boise State now is not what Boise State yeah. was. 2016 does it certainly certainly changes things but uh, i mean you look at, at the big 12 now you know with, with texas and oklahoma and, and they kind of made the same calculus right they, they knew they were going to win less in the sec yeah. oklahoma has been dominant in, in the big 12 winning titles not just in in, in college football but in, in other sports and they know Softball. that not only yeah. going to the sec means uh stepping up their game but uh, they're, they're probably going to have less shots at, at the ultimate prize and and you know in sports like baseball and, and softball like you mentioned I mean, yeah. it, it's just going to mean uh, fewer championships for for the Sooners. But at the same time, you know, when you're when you're getting 80, 90, 100 million dollars guaranteed and, and you are you do kind of have that prestige of, of that one league, it, it, it certainly makes it sense for them. But the, the leftovers there in the Big 12. Now you're talking about Baylor potentially making more regular college football playoff experience uh, uh, appearances. Oklahoma State, you know, this is great for them. You know, Cincinnati coming in UCF like this is a, another path for them. And uh, they, they've made the investments to be competitive in those leagues. I, I, I do think it's going to be very interesting to see how things shake out with the Mountain West and the American. And, and you mentioned the Sun Belt, I, I think less so for Conference USA. But, you know, some of those programs in, in Conference USA, if you're able to kind of win the table, run the table. I mean, you got a chance. I mean, this is this is why Liberty and, and others have, have joined the league. This is yeah. uh, now their path to a playoff. And it's not just about bowl bids. It's like, hey, if, if you run the table, you beat maybe a power five opponent or two. Uh, this this is a real opportunity for your program. And, and I think the residual effects of, of having one of those games uh, on campus, it's going to be enormous if, if you're able to even get up in, in that high in the standings. I was talking with a couple of ADs about, about just the, the, the impact that they would have hosting one of these games on, on campus, whether whether you're a Power 5 AD or, or a group of 5 AD. Like a, we, we all know, that obviously, the Power 5 are, are going to have the end, whether you're a Big 12 program or whatnot. But like just the amount of interest or, that it's going to have on those campuses. Um, you know, parking is, is going to be raised. You know, your, your rates on parking are going to be ridiculous right but your donor base is going to be so fired up and and i think the flip side too is you know a lot of these programs you keep making those those playoffs and you keep hosting those games but you don't get over the hump that could put, put some pressure on those doster, uh, boosters to kind of donate and uh pony up for the buyout as well for, and, and and move on from the coaches so i think there's going to be a lot of second order effects I'm, I'm curious to see how this plays out with recruiting i think that was kind of the one thing that nobody really kind of foresaw coming with the current four team college football playoff is because it was dominated by so many, uh, so select few teams, you know, that, that really had an impact in terms of where players were going and uh, to the detriment of the sport at large. And I, I think that's going to be another thing that maybe this helps with a little bit. 
And uh, I, I can't wait to kind of see just ultimately how, how it happens in practice, because for, for a lot of these programs, they're just not in that postseason conversation. And as, as the numbers have bared out over the last couple of years, they would have been in past years. And we're going to get even better matchups, I think, in the non-conference slate as a result of this. I can't wait for those more Notre Dame, Ohio State games to, to, to give you stress and, and uh, some more gray hairs. You know, like I, I cannot wait uh, for some of these big time matchups uh, on, in both the regular season and come the postseason. I, if nothing else, I want to learn more about how this money is going to be distributed. I want to learn more about the, 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 the details here because that stuff does matter. But at the end of the day, to your last point, a lot of teams that were not in this conversation at all are going to be a part of it. And if that means that maybe the postseason implications of a game like Florida, Utah from a couple of days ago are diminished that's something that I'm okay with knowing that suddenly a lot more games in November will matter um, in this current system right now. Um, yes. The, the September ones may matter immensely, but most of the games by like October 10th won't, especially because Ohio state and Georgia and Alabama are going to be 17 point favorites in almost every regular season game that they play outside of like two. Um, well, they don't lose you know, those. Yeah. But the thing that is, the, the losses are still going to sting, you know, like, and you still want to go out on that field and you still want to win every single yeah. game. Like I always feel like everybody talking about the devaluation de of the regular season, like you, you, you got to get in the mindset of, of these fans and these players and these coaches, like they, they live and breathe for this sport. They, they want to go out there and, and win every single game. And, um, you know, taking a, maybe a, a tad bit of the sting out of, of some of those losses, you know, knowing there is still a tomorrow to to live for. Maybe maybe that helps them in, in, in terms of the postseason front. But um, I, I mean, I, I do feel like that is, is a bit overblown, especially when the, the trade off is getting more of these marquee matchups. And, you know, yeah, you know, Utah and, and, and uh, Florida might not quite have the 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 same postseason implications as it does right now. But you know, at the same time, those are still a lot of games that, that we want to experience. We, we want to go down to the swamp if you're a Utah fan and, and experience that SEC atmosphere that, that had, sure. had the place rocking, you know, and, and, and vice versa when the Gators come to Salt Lake City next year. I mean, I think it's going to be a great experience for them. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, to, to always when we're, we're – Every week, it seems like we're like we've eliminated a, a conference from playoff consideration, and where it's like, why, why, are sh why should we pay attention to to the Pac-12 now? Well, now that now there's a legitimate reason to to keep talking about them, keep getting all, the, all these programs interested, in it, and uh, you know, shine a spotlight on on this great sport because it is so regional. You know, you, you can really highlight uh, a lot of the fan bases across the country, and, and I think it's going to be great. Um, not just that they're they're going to be continually involved in those type of conversations, but um, yeah, I think whether if, if you're a, a TV network and you are ponying up all this this uh, money, you want those fans out west to have some interest in games in the SEC. You want them to, to have know what the kind of impact is from that Iowa Minnesota game, you know, on yeah. your potential seed, or uh, whether it knocks uh, an, another conference team out, and and what that might uh, might mean for uh, jockeying position or, or head coaching hot seats and stuff like that. So um, I, I think it's going to be a, a lot more healthier for the sport itself, and I I, I just can't wait. I, I think after really several years, probably 18 months or so of, of true discussion about should we expand the playoff? It's finally here. Now it's it's a down to the nitty gritty details. And and hopefully we'll see uh, some progress on those over the coming weeks and months and to where um, this thing will, will become even more of a reality. And uh, I, I certainly cannot wait for it to, to happen and, and see what uh, ultimately how it's going to impact the rest of the sport. I Yeah, I'm excited to not talk about this anymore. Um, just like I'm sure other people feel like with NIL, or with yeah. a couple other things that we kind of have to go to back again and again. I want to wrap this up a little bit earlier here because we actually are planning on doing a second episode later this week. Um, I don't know a thousand percent yet if we'll be able to do that every week this season, but that was closer to the schedule we did before kind of going into summer hours and we're working on bringing in a couple of other guests. Uh, we're, as you know, we talked about in the beginning of the show, we're all making a couple of extra audio shows right now and, and, and other things here between D1 Classroom and between uh, uh, head coaching you and some of our other products. You can continue to make sure you're getting this show everywhere that you get your podcast. If you enjoy it, uh, please leave five stars. That helps other people find the show. You can find Extra Points at extrapointsmb.com. And you can find Brian and I's video work at Collegiate Sports Connect. Uh, I got everything there, right? 
Yeah, and uh, as you're listening to this podcast, make sure you, you check out the D1 Ticker uh, YouTube page, not only for, for going for two, but uh, Head Coach U is, is on there, and Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, wherever you get your podcasts. Be, be sure to sign up for, for that new one that uh, we, we're bringing your way. I think you'll uh, this audience in particular will really enjoy uh, those conversations with Bronco, and we got a lot more coming uh, your way. This this fall, um, you know, I, speaking of podcasts, I mean, we just uh, – had a lot of ADs and, and commissioners submit their recommendations on, on things they're listening to. They, a lot of them are listening to going for two. I was, uh, I was about to say, I was looking for the, I mean, the far be it for me to shy away from any chance here to, to self promote, given that we, we've got kids, we got to feed, but, but the people that said that they enjoy listening to this and not some boring New York times thing, we appreciate it. We, Checks we in the mail. It. We do appreciate those listeners, and, and we didn't even have to prompt them or, or bribe them too much. I mean, it, it, it was great to have some some great feedback, uh, not just on on this podcast, but everything that we're doing. And so, uh, you know, if you're looking for some additional podcast recommendations, you know, if if, if your AD is, is subscribed to the ticker and, and reads it daily, you might as well listen to their their podcast recommendations so you can uh, see what they're they're listening to as well. And you can find that all on on d1ticker.com. So exciting times uh, as we expand the uh, the universe here and uh, continue to do more. But uh, the football season is here and it's, it's not going to stop being busy that's for sure yeah we're i'm going to add uh the d1 ticker podcast recommendation story to the show notes that will go out in extra points on friday morning uh, along with some other information about our other shows you can catch all of that thanks so much for listening everybody thanks so much for watching we'll catch up with you again very soon